How would it feel to have a thriving fitness business and have the freedom to enjoy life at the fullest? Well, that is exactly what the Trainer Revenue Multiplier Show is going to give you. My name is Matthew Park. This is Amy Filer. Hey, guys. And we are here to serve. What's going on, everybody? And welcome to the Trainer Revenue Multiplier Podcast. As always, I am your host, Jamie Filer, and I am privileged to be joined by Jace Lopez of Apex Training and Laurent DeCary of really TRM, but also the many things that Laurent does. How are you guys? Phenomenal. It's going to be on. Awesome. Good, 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 good. So, you know, we purposely choose which leaders we're going to pair with which topic. And you two were the first to come to mind when it comes to team process development and implementation. And it's so funny because literally right before I pushed live, we were actually talking about implementation, setting expectations early with team members. So really a perfect segue. I would love to hear, starting with Jace, about how you went about developing your team. When did you know you needed one? How did you, and how did you mold them? I think with any business, whenever you get really busy, you're like, oh, at some point, I'm not going to be able to take on this load and, and be able to uh, support my clients or the business at the highest level possible. So you need t- team members or, or pieces around you. But also what's good about team is it, you realize that you're not the best at everything. So when, if you could pull pieces in of people who are strong where you're weak, it, it makes it makes a, a full circle business, which is always the goal there. Um, but how, how, how do you- how did I actually put the team building uh, process is wow. that um, I, I think whenever you get around people who are operating at a high level of frequency, like you are, you know, you just, you have a high standard for yourself. You're crushing everything you do. It, it almost come, kind of comes naturally. Right. You know, so at, at, at our gym, we, we have a long probation period. So if we, if somebody is interested in being part of our team or to be a trainer or somebody inside it, uh, we make sure that we have like a six month probation period because you can fake passion for a long period of time. Right. And I think honestly it happens for like the third, three to five month uh, time is a problem. It's like time frame was like, hey, like it's not for me or you kind of see that shift. So you're like, OK, we're like, are we go forward with this together or is this a time that we need to part ways and, and, and find the best for, for each other here? So I think having a, that long probation period, but also just seeing how they do with each other, because if you have somebody who's great, but not get along with the other team members, it's not going to work. Right. You know, and, and, and then if, if it does work, somebody's got either the, the current um, team members have to leave or, or the new person. Right. So mm-hmm. I think finding the cohesiveness within that relationship is, is key as well. So uh, but normally when it comes to uh, new new people on my team, we, hire, we normally hire new trainers. Right. And when, when it comes to new trainer, I think hiring somebody within your business already, whether it be a current client, maybe somebody young for a new career or, or, or somebody who's uh, who's just come to a gym, kind of sees it, likes, likes the culture. That That's normally the best way because they're, they're familiar with the process they're familiar yeah. with the expectations that way when it comes in it's, it's seamless you just show them the ins and outs and and then of course they go on their own uh, in, in a good manner compare somebody who who kind of did the process themselves for a long period of time you know they might be successful in their own right if you have them come on board it's hard to train an old dog and of course the ex- expectation might be different from both ends yeah oh i love that so much yeah it's much easier to mold someone that's already been molded as a client almost and they've seen your process the the one thing i want to dive a little bit deeper on jace is your six month probation period because the truth is that's long and you identified it as long and a lot of us know that really the goal is always to hire slow fire fast why do you give the benefit of the doubt for a full six months before you decide they're not a good fit for your culture uh, again, they can fake things, right? You know, they can say they want one thing and and, and be that person or have that schedule for a little while. But then mm-hmm. as time goes on, like, oh, I, actually, I didn't want to work mornings. You know, I, I, I did that because, you know, maybe maybe it would lead to something else, right? Or, 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 or maybe, again, it's not, it's not a good fit. So I think the six months, we're renegotiating every every six months is, is the goal yeah. there, you know. But also, we'll pay them uh, a, a, um, a 50-50. I do percent, percent splits my, my trainers and coaches. We'll pay them 50-50. Right. And then once, once they graduate past the six months, we actually renegotiate to a higher percentage, which which is really nice. So, so they look forward to it and it gives them an incentive to keep pushing uh, whether, you know, it's, they're doing well or it's a little slower. Yeah, I love that. OK, um, Laurent, you also have had to build your team relatively quickly. I felt like it was 
it was pretty solid. And then all of a sudden it was like, took off like a rocket ship. So what was yep. your team process development? Well, my team process development was really my own development, right? It was me getting, me becoming the best uh, tech engineer I possibly could in the TRM engine, mastering the software and um, really knowing the ins and outs uh, of, and really knowing the ins and out of the software itself, but also understanding um, how the, the, the system worked, right? What were the key, what, identifying what were the key positions mm. I needed to take myself within the business really helped me create roles that I could then just find the per perfect person to fill in this role, right? So it was easy for me to realize, oh, well, we, I do a lot of projects for my clients. Oh, yeah. Well, a, a good role title for that would be the project manager. So I, I created this role, then found an assistant that, you know, and qualified that assistant to properly fill in these shoes, right? Yep. Which he did. And now I created a, you know, a very basic um, training for that person, right? To, to onboard for that new team member to onboard them properly. Yeah. Um, and it turned out to work very well. You know, I streamlined the communications, make sure everything was clear. And I had done it so much myself mm -hmm. that it was ingrained in me. And then I just had to, you know, literally take my brain, put it in my right. assistant's brain and then uh, give him the spotlight. You're in, you're in that position now. So you yeah. take the lead here. If you have any questions, let me know. And that freed up so much time. So then I loved it so much. Did it a second time. Now I have two assistants. Yeah, but mastering it myself first was the main, was the best, yes. was the great way to, yeah, uh, creating strong, solid team, uh, team leaders, team members. Did you guys put your standard operating procedures down on paper first, or did you train someone kind of orally and then put it down when you realized you you were gonna even like keep growing even more and need a second hire, and you're like, oh crap, I'm gonna have to replicate this again. I don't want to say it out loud. Right, put it on paper. Well, how do you guys go from like oral tradition to written? Uh, I'll go take it first. So, um, before I knew anything about business, it was like, hey, come on board and we'll just like develop you as we go. Uh, and now we do have a, a, a SOP um, document that we give every trainer, every, 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 uh, even a prospect coming in to see, mm -hmm. hey, is, is this, can, can you fill these roles or is this even aligned to what you, you found value, what you do? So, um, that we definitely have that now, but uh, any business starting out, I highly recommend write down all responsibilities, create that SOP. So coming in, in your process with expectations and values. I love it. Laurent. I created a full fledged membership course for them. Of course you did. So it's like I created one for every position and it's like, okay, the project management, you know, obviously. Uh, and then it's just a series of videos that introduce the company, introduce the core values, um, that explains the position and that, you know, gives them the steps to be set up and how even how to ask me for support so mm -hmm. that I can value my time and train them on a specific, um, you know, a, a specific standard when it comes to even reaching out to me, you know. Um, so what that does is it enables them to respect my time and it kind of forces them to find the solutions on their own before they come to me and ask for questions. So. Oh, so important. The membership membership site was I just love recording videos and and structuring them. That's my nerdy part. So figured I'd leverage that. Yeah. No, it makes so much sense and is also a perfect segue into implementation because you both have SOPs. You have a membership site, Laurent. How do you ensure, especially in that probation period, Jace, where you know people could be faking passion and faking it in general? How do you make sure they're implementing the standards that Apex and, and TRM have for your employees? Yeah, I think, I mean, we're blessed working in a gym setting, right? You know, so having those frequent meetings with them, uh, seeing them in person, train people. So are they on their phone? Are they sitting down? How, how's their camaraderie? You know, that really helps a lot because you can tell a lot for somebody just watching one session, right? They're not, they're not a client, you know? So, um, and, and again, you know, I mentioned faking passion. A lot of people are passionate about helping people, 
a lot of people are passionate about fitness. But whenever you make something a career or a job and it gets a little strenuous, that can make that fire burn at least get a lot a lot dimmer. Yeah. So uh not to say that they're not truly passionate about it. Um, uh, again, you, you get burned out really fast if, if, if you pursue as a career and you're really busy. Yep, absolutely. And Laurent, what what about you? What do you notice for your people? Yeah, well, just like Jace is saying, it's like you know the that fire can can dim down after three months or six months and so on. So one one way I found to keep my team motivated is to keep myself engaged and very disciplined in what I'm doing and really um, keep working very hard every day. And they see it, you know, they see that I'm I'm leading from the front. But I also leave them the space to also take the front and then lead from the back and make sure everything is fine. Like I'm on all fronts, you know, yeah. so it keeps them engaged. Uh, so elevating my own standards brings them to elevate their standards afterwards. And it creates this ongoing momentum of uh, wanting to push the business forward uh, all together. You know, it's a team thing. So uh, that, uh, that, yeah, that, yeah, that would be my way of doing it. I love it. Now, in terms of the the cadence, you said, Jace, you guys have frequent yes. frequent what cadence of meetings. So say it one more time. The cadence. How frequently do you and your team meet? So, me and my trainers meet once a month. Of course, we go over movements, go over um, anything that we need, we need realignment on, any, any house cleaning issues or, or, or uh, matters. Uh, my online coaches, who yes. some don't live here, uh, we meet once a month. So, uh, of course, because I'm not, I don't see that that often. I think that weekly seven day meetup period uh, is super beneficial, but also just get no one's person. Like, you know, like I, I you know, I, I want to be your boss. I, I want to lead you to, to success, but also I want, I want to get to know as a person to help find those interim motivators so you, you can continue to grow in, in your business and your life. Yep. I love that. Laurent, what is your frequency? What is your cadence of meetings? Uh, that's a great question. We don't really um, have team meetings per se. Okay. Um, just because, just because of zones uh, me and my teams are in right. um but we're in, in constant communication on whatsapp so obviously they're going to ask me when they have questions and so on um but it would be a good idea for me to you know down the road implement some team meetings just because i there's always updates i want to share them share with yeah. them and so on and it could kind of break this uh pattern of just being working 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 you know we could uh yeah. base and so on so it's a good idea. It's been working well without them, but it, it could be a good idea definitely to implement some for sure. Yeah, like Jay said about his online trainers, there's something to be said for that face-to-face. -face. Uh, it, it takes the connection a little bit deeper, right? Like as soon as my VA sees my face, I become a human being, not just a taskmaster through WhatsApp, right? Agreed. Mm -hmm. I like that. So at these these meetings, or even Laura, in terms of implementing the standards that you spoke about, do you have KPIs for implementation? Jace, how many people your trainers have to have on their roster, on board, collecting testimonials, um, referrals? What what implementation of standards do you have? So as far as KPIs, um, the only KPI I really have for our, our in-person coaches is that when they reach a certain model of their roster and, and payments per month, we actually let them go to a rent-based payment model. So, of course, they get, have the ability to make more money, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't have any for my online coaches because the business ebbs and flows. And, uh, of course, you know, like I think social media is great, but it, it can create like unneeded pressure. So it's like, all right, I'm already putting a lot on them. So so like expect them to get testimonials, do this, this, when things aren't smooth or if it's not their full-time job it, it can be tough so that's something I, I do agree with it's just something i haven't dove deep into uh implementing yeah that's fair laurent you bet so you know obviously uh the 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 systems department i run for CRM CRM is, 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 um, is um is different, it is different than different. maybe you maybe who are you. listening or a coach uh the kpis might be a uh, totally different um but i would look at the position your the coach or the team member is taking in your company and just look at look at their tasks in general, um, like, and and then chunk it down in numbers. So like, okay, um, how many programs do they create um, on a weekly basis? Um, you know, how many check-ins did they receive? How many check-ins uh -huh. did they answer? How many sessions did they run? Uh, all those things, and um, yeah, just make sure you keep track of those. And um, yeah, and if there's lead gen that your coaches do as well. Uh, tracking that would be a good idea as well. 
-hmm. How frequently do you guys do performance reviews? Not frequent. Cool. Okay, <laughs> great. No, that's okay. This is, listen, everyone runs their business differently. Totally. Well, cool. actually, once, once a year, we sit down with each one and we go over the entire year. Of course, like, you know, clients, retention, money, goals, you know, so I, I'd say once a year then. Okay, totally cool. That's that's awesome. And then out of curiosity, do you, do you provide a bonus? I know that you said you didn't really have KPIs, so it's hard yeah. to gauge, but is it just like a bonus based on how many clients they're carrying? And then again, they get the privilege of either a higher percentage split if they're online or the rent based model, if they're carrying enough clients. Yeah. I mean, the bonus for, for would be the rent based model, right? Cause they can, the crew is create the income yeah. they want. Yep. Laurent, do you have some sort of performance review for your, for your team? Uh, that's a good question. Honestly, I'm always auditing their performance. Oh, it's like, okay. in the sense, I, I don't micromanage it. But I'm lo always looking like, are they are they sharp? You know, are they are they on the edge or are they crushing it? You know, yep. not only for me and what it does for the business, but also also for them. You know, I want, oh, to, well, I want well, them to know well, that they're performing. You know, because sure, sure. they look up to me as a leader. So I like when they perform because they know they're having positive impact. So I I don't I didn't mean like I'm always like on your back looking at what you're doing. You and, are. <laughs> but I'm always on the lookout for great performances of and course. so uh, and and obviously yes I, I do reward them and i do uh um have a uh, yeah have some uh rewards for them that are planned uh yeah. um, so long as you know they they keep performing well and uh doing a good job and communicating with our clients properly and and with respect and with uh, enthusiasm and uh yeah you bet love it Love it. Um, I'm only going to chime in here only because I do things a little bit differently than each of you. Uh, I have weekly meetings with our assistant coaches and my setter slash VA. Each of them have specific KPIs and they're, you know, similar to when I have clients in TRM, there's a green light, yellow light, and red light. You know, if they did not meet the standards of a specific KPI, like for example, uh, client retention, Jace, like you said, if they were below 60% for client retention that month, mm. they're in the red. That's yeah. it. And if they're in, the, if red, they're in the red two two weeks in a row, then we have a more serious discussion. Again, there's no problem. It's just, hey, how can I support you? Same thing. If a client doesn't check in two weeks in a row, it's not wrong or right, but the health of the client isn't, isn't great. Mm. So... Mm -mm. Um, yeah, that is that is how I like to run the implementation part. Just I means everything is can I, is. Can I ask you a question? How yes. do you um um do you have them track their own numbers basically? And yeah. So, so how do you how how do you go about that? Great question. So I have I believe it's seven different measures in a Google Sheet, and inside each measure is a standard that indicates below expectation meeting expectation, above expectation, and beyond expectation. And they're very tangible and objective. How many times did you post on social media? How many times did you interact with our Facebook group? How many uh, conversations did you start? Client retention, referrals, testimonials, and then, oh my gosh, there's one more. I don't remember, but there, yeah, there are seven. So she knows exactly what numbers indicate below, at, or above. And then that, and then she enters those in. Because again, it's hard to hide how many times you posted on Instagram. I can see it. Yeah, that's a fact. I, I like that, Jamie. Um, and is it like a, a, is it basically like a weekly check-in for your yeah, uh, team? That's exactly that's it. Yeah. I love it. Because yeah. I, um, I, I always want to those weekly reports. And I think having that sheet would make it very, very simple for them. Just, Hey, wrap up your week, do it. Uh, and chime in with me when it's done. And then I can just look over it and they can report back up to me. It's an easy way to do it. And then I can actually, yeah, have those standards and, um, Oh, I like this. Yeah. I can send it to you after Laurent. I'll send you the one I have for my VA and the one I have for my assistant coach. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. All um, right, guys. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, well, I just wanted to build on that where j just for a final thought. Yeah. Um, so basically, you know, onboarding a new team member isn't so different when you think of it than onboarding a new client. You know, it's like you're going to have a qualification process. 
You're going to have an onboarding process, mm. nurturing process, a check-in process, you know? Yeah. And so as if you can streamline just those, those little parts, then it, it you know, and you're, and you're that on that onboard, then you'll be a great leader and able to onboard uh, new coaches as well. Absolutely. And it makes their life easier too, because they know what the expectations are. Mm -hmm. Jace, what are your last thoughts, words of wisdom, words of advice for people who are looking to develop their team and implement those processes? Yeah. Um, whenever you're onboarding new members, uh, make sure that you know their job better than them. Because <laughs> if, if you're high inspired for something you've never done before, it's like, it's just, the expectation is going to be there. It's just wild west, you know. So I think LaRon said best. He said he leads from the front. So make sure your your work ethic is is um, is visual, and they can of course uh, model that after what your expectations you have for them. Perfect, awesome guys. Thank you so much. Where can people find you if they want to get in touch? So you follow on Instagram. I'm probably the most active on there at uh, Jace underscore Lopez underscore. underscore. Uh, a few more pages, but if you follow me there, it's probably a good spot. Awesome, LaRon. Some, yeah, just follow me on Instagram, laurent.dt. And uh, I got some pretty high quality reels that share all kinds of stuff uh, tech related for personal trainers. So find me there. Amazing. And I am at JAIM91. Guys, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for listening. Hope you got a ton of value out of today's episode. If you did, make sure you like, share, subscribe, rate us. And we look forward to seeing you on next week's episode. Thank you. Awesome.